All right, well, this is going to be the final installment in this series on practicing the first arabesque. And we begin at measure 89, right at the end of the piece. Well, let's see. Another example of the so-called planing, where you're taking these notes or these chords. Let's just look at the bottom note that you're playing in each chord. It's finger five, C sharp, first note, then B, then A, then G sharp, then F sharp, then E. Again, just like we had somewhere earlier in the piece, we're using the notes of the E major scale and we're moving down the scale. Same thing with finger four. E, G sharp, C sharp, B, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Same with finger uh, two. And finger one, which is the same exact note as finger five. All right, so that's the idea. But we have to play all four notes, or we actually have to not so much play all four notes in the same time, but prepare four notes in the same time. more challenging than just walking through each note with a single finger. So my suggestion is do the octave, make sure that's easy. Now add the long fingers. Or, yeah, here's a D natural, so here we modulate slightly from E major to A major by uh, making that D natural, right? Like uh, D natural at that location, uh, B D natural instead of D sharp. It's a very common plagal move that composers like to use. I can explain what that means at some other point, but yeah. That's really how you want to be able to play this passage before you play it like... Okay, now I'm continuing into the next line there. Uh, yeah. In terms of fingerings, I might even suggest... Uh, It's really hard because you keep moving down the keyboard and nothing really feels ideal. The nice thing is we do have pedal uh, in our arsenal, so maybe I would suggest instead of that editorial four, actually let me get rid of a lot of these notations, although they do make sense, just so we, we can start afresh. There we go. Yeah, so... Five here maybe is an idea. Maybe even a two right here. That might be interesting. And so on and so forth. Because that really takes care of some awkwardness when it comes to shifts. And now... similar idea down below, but I'll, I'll get to it in a second. So... Every time the pedal moves, or pedal changes, we have to move. Something like that, right? 
and the pedals change it right here put it on so on so forth I would just stop and literally check my positioning same thing by the way as before uh, hand inside the keyboard because just because it's <laughs> playing the thumb enough times on the black keys to where that whole zigzag in and out in and out is going to be too problematic so just keep it even if you cannot play it cleanly let's let's say your hand is a bit smaller better to still to do that because well then you still uh, arpeggiate so it, it's it's going to be possible to play it cleanly zigzag in and out it's just an invitation for an error to creep in and make make the left hand's life pretty miserable so right, stay inside like that okay so um, not to jump ahead of myself uh, stop check right on that let's color it red and then stop even before the downbeat let's prepare right here of course the big jump here just stop and check let's co color it pink okay stop on pink and now as soon as you change the pedal you have to do this little thing with the fifth finger and the second finger you can kind of put both of them in place and continue maybe a pause right here let's color it orange whoops what happened uh, orange right here Make sure the left hand is in place. And as you play the B, instantly put this first finger on A. Don't, don't leave it curved underneath like that, yeah? Another jump. This is jumps every, every half measure okay remember the backwards thing it will definitely help to, uh, for practicing these shifts okay let's just keep coloring the rainbow right here okay so that that's the idea and uh, thumb there in the green and the green highlight same thing another thumb so the nice thing it's very very similar the whole passage is just the repeat of the same ideas, plain and down. Stop. Stop. And then as we continue, we shift right away. Stop. You can keep the pedal down if you want. And now... Stop. Check that happened. that green stop on that cyan and so on all right next last line of this page too far down and 
I would do that same thing I mentioned earlier, five right here and the two right here, which means prepare those notes here and here. And I'll start my color scheme afresh. Position change here, position change, oh, that's wrong, like that, like that, like that, and like that. Stop and check, bring the thumb out, like that. check. Now here, for the first time, we use finger three in the chordal pattern, like that, on the E sharp, right there. Go back to 5, 4, 2, 1. And it's mostly just the thumb that needs to shift like that. Actually, this is already good. Another thumb. Again, you could technically move the thumb in the, in the right hand earlier than those highlights, because of course everything is pedaled. But in my head, it somehow makes it makes things simpler if I can coordinate some of these shifts in both hands at the same time. So sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't, but when I can, I do it. Yeah, finger three on that F sharp here. And we get to the end of this page. Any questions here, do write a comment. Otherwise, let's continue. To do to do to do to do to do to do stop. Yeah, and we get to the A and we get to let me just get rid of some of those annotation layers. So I'm going to put a quick Struggling with my technology a bit. Right, so at the end of this uh, page, I want to prepare my left hand. We can even highlight it green. Yeah. Nothing to do in the right hand because it's already got the fifth finger on A, which we're about to play, but in the left hand, boom. One, five, two, one. So continue in there. There is our 5-2-1. Let's think, maybe there are some alternative fingers. Just give me a second. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, so uh, this passage is split between the two hands, uh, and I have it completely wrong, I apologize, there it is, top of the page, okay, so let's, let's discuss what's going on here, we hit the A, and as soon as we do that in the right hand, we bring in the position change, which prepares us for the bracket I'm about to add, this one right here, so the first four notes for the right hand. And that's basically what you're doing there. The next one is a big one. Because it also includes finger five. Right, so bracket, bracket, 
back down again. That's the right hand. Left hand. I would practice bracketing these three notes and shifting there right away. Forget the fact that you have that legato line. Your pedal is your friend, so there is your jumping note. And that jumping note sets you up. Now here, yeah, it's just one single second finger in the, in the, what am I trying to say? Left hand. So that's easy to do it by going over the thumb. But that previous... Uh, for me, it's a jumping note. I mean, you could do this. But it just sort of feels too beginner level and there's no reason for it. Now, guess what the problem with this current situation is? Yes, you guessed it. Uh, my left hand is stuck on C sharp which means I have to put in a reminder to move. The sooner you move, the better. Where do you move? Well, of course, you move to those BB octave notes. Let's just go ahead and highlight it red. Add the red highlight. Please check your position on the left hand. And I would argue that practicing a very specific jump like that is a good idea. highlight the yellow highlight right so really specific jumps to master this passage now myself I actually like to play my thumb inside the keys for such passages because I find otherwise it kind of feels like it's getting stuck somehow if it's inside the key it doesn't get stuck I don't know how to explain it I think the reason is I'm playing it like this and my wrist is slightly higher that's probably the reason it's not that high I'm not trying to do something crazy but I think it's just a little bit higher whereas if I play it on the edge I let my wrist drop really low, which you can kind of barely see on the side cameras there. And um, that that's what makes it hard to get the thumb out of the key and move it. But with being inside the keys, I'm actually a little bit higher on my wrist. Anyway, that's just a by the way. Now, uh, next line, let's sort that out. jumping like crazy like we've done many times in the past I don't even know what the, the best fingering is to be quite honest with you let's do this let's put finger four on that G sharp at the beginning of the line, Pio diminuendo, by the way. So we're big forte sound. And I don't think there is a ritenuto, ritardando, it's just, just diminuendo, so. there 
Not four, three. Maybe finger two. Now here I am going over my thumb a lot, aren't I? is because I can is because I can not not in the left hand so let's let's first mark the red highlight here that's just a jump but in the right hand while I'm holding that G sharp I can quite easily bend my thumb underneath I have plenty of time to do that therefore two four th the thumb is already underneath my hand and then I just extend my hand once I I play that thumb, so my position change actually occurs with the plane of the of that note. Let's color it uh, pink. Yeah, but let's do let's do one more, one other thing, which is this, and that would be let's say orange. Okay, so. The reason I'm going over the thumb and not trying to move, because again, there is no reason to do that. I'm not continuing some, some such passage, right? I'm just hitting with F sharp with finger three, and I'm getting ready to rise back up with those fast notes. So I've got finger two here, finger four, finger four. What is going on here? There's some bizarre fingering from the editor, fingerings. Okay, so here's what's going on in the right hand. Uh, let's color it um, yellow. No, going back. So at yellow, my thumb is actually bent underneath. I'm kind of trying to keep it on B. I know I cannot, but right, it's bent underneath my hand. And then I'm doing all the usual stuff in my uh, left hand. And I'm jumping back down here. So. Make sure to do the green and cyan, but there it is. With this conf configuration of my right hand, the thumb is again bent underneath. So when I play the fourth finger, I'm ready to strike the B without needing to do much. And then I extend, so that's the basic solution of this passage. Two measures that basically do the same thing, yeah? Um, we have let me just highlight down down on the, the downbeat of the PU diminuendo. Make sure the thumb is stuck underneath. Red highlight, the jump, orange highlight, and then with that thumb bent underneath, you play the B and the pink highlight. There it is, good. Now reach over with the three, thumb is bent underneath, green highlight, yeah. Indigo. So th those are the moves. Now to coordinate them, please use the uh, what do you call that thing? Backwards approach. I mean, I call it gobs, which stands for goal-oriented backward stepping approach. So at, si at uh, indigo, you would be like this, uh, and the left hand is already like this. Okay, fine. So don't play it. Just hold it like this. Now, fourth finger with the thumb bent underneath, hold it, hold the A, and then just practice that 
right hand flick. Okay, good. Then D sharp. Right, always stopping on that indigo. Okay, good. Uh, now practice moving the left hand as well. Okay, one more time. Now it's tricky because I had to move the left hand down and the right hand up. Good. And again, if you're finding it too tricky, uh, just reduce your only do go up to one highlight, right? So let's only do the uh, cyan. Oops, wrong wrong way. There it is. And the right hand is just waiting. It's not doing anything. Okay, then A. Okay, cyan. D sharp, finger four. Okay, so just one jump. Then you go right before the green to the green. Okay. And then together the yellow and one more time. So practice those backwards like this. Eventually you can just kind of do it uh, easily. And then, and then start to combine multiple position shifts into a single practice segment. Something like that. But always, always, always choose your stopping point where you can freeze and check what just happened good so i think we are very close to being done because this next line is exactly from our opening or in fact next four measures are from our opening let's color them some fancy color mm, wrong that bracket matches exactly with the very beginning here we are hmm, I'm, I'm finding it hard to find the place okay uh, yeah i have a lot of highlights i apologize but basically it's right here A little crazy, I, I know. So So if you need some uh, practice guidance on this passage, in the end, uh, go to measure six through nine, seven, eight, nine, six through nine. Okay, let's go back to the last page. There we are. All right, so skipping that bracketed section and going right to the coda. Starting at the end of the bracket, we have... That's the sequence right there. Just repeats up an octave, up an octave, up an octave. Reduce my zoom just a bit. Yeah, that's that's better. Okay, now we can see the whole thing. Really screwing up. My approach to this is pretty much like editors, except for the little moment right here that's a three and I'm seeing this set of measures right up until penultimate measure as the grouping of two beats that beat, that beat and this beat and then again this beat and that beat so beats one and two, beats three and four, one and two, three and four. 
therefore, and you know, again, it's like when you see the editorial markings, you're wondering what was that person thinking? Because let, let me just highlight something. So let's say this. Mm, let's make it pink. At pink, I'm about to play E in my right hand, right? And then let's go down to the next measure and I'm going to highlight it, let's say yellow. Like that. At yellow, I'm also about to play E. And you can see that the editor clearly says that here at yellow we play E with the third finger, but then the previous E was played with the fourth finger. Why? Well, the only reason I can think for why, if the editor was actually thinking about it, was that if you don't shift your torso to the left of the keyboard, then it is pretty hard, uh, perhaps, to, I don't like, I actually don't know at all, it just doesn't make any sense. So, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four. Okay, that's all we're doing up three octaves. So let's add remaining highlights. Okay. So what they're telling us to do is make sure to prepare our hand positions thusly. I'm going to play the right hand inside the keys so it does not collide with my left hand. Okay. In fact, it's going to be over here. Move at pink. That's the only time when we have to also worry about post pink position change in the left hand slightly like that. So my third finger aims towards the third. My third finger aims towards the third above the root, which is G sharp. As we play the third, just pivot around and make sure the left hand is in position. The right hand being inside the keyboard is out of its way. Right, so I'm kind of holding my right hand thumb a little bit higher and it allows the left hand to slide right underneath. One more time. Red. I'm trying to prepare before I play. In fact, let's do that. I like it even more. We're going to prepare that G sharp with finger three at pink. Let's use my idea of synchronized hand preparation. Let's do it right here. Let's do it right here. Let's do it right here. It's a little sloppy. Like here and here and like that and like that and like that. As you can see, my red, my orange, my green are all identical positions, just in different octaves. Same with my pink, my yellow, and my cyan. So let's actually practice that. Just feeling that shape in different octaves. Here, I probably want to move my torso down to about here. Oh, and check this out. At right after the cyan, 
why is there the editorial four when again it's a three? What's going on? I don't know. I mean, what you play after Indigo, it doesn't really matter. That's really important. Jumping note. Okay, so let me just work through backwards on that final ride and passage, and that'll be the end of this tutorial, and you can happily practice and forget about everything I just told you. Here we go. At Indigo, we're like this. At Cyan, we're like this. So we're going to play, but that's too many notes, that's six notes to play before indigo. So I'm going to only play the last note right before indigo. And I'm going to practice position shifting. Yeah. Kind of still stuck in my previous position at the one I have at, at cyan. Right, kind of just holding and then boop, indigo again. And then second to last before indigo. One more time. Okay. Got it. Now G sharp in the left hand. Okay, just always stopping on indigo, checking my hand position. Good. And then go back to B. Okay, and then finally E, the one you see in red, the red finger number. Hmm, I'm actually holding E. Okay. Now I've kind of worked through that entire segment from the beginning of cyan all the way into indigo. And I have some glitch on my side view camera for some reason. Uh, sorry about that. But we're about to be done. Uh, so let's see. And then, of course, you work backwards from uh, before indigo, or not sorry, from before cyan all the way back to green. So let's do that. I'm actually going to cover up this annoying flicker. There it is. It's still flickering. Well, I'm going to disable it somewhere. Nice. All right, here we go. Uh, boom. I'm going to buy a new camera because I think that one isn't very good. Okay, so to, to do that, to, to play from green to cyan, let's start at the right before cyan. So holding that G sharp with finger two and practicing the position shift. Okay, got it. And holding the C sharp, playing to G sharp and then doing the jump. Okay. Should be easy enough. But I, th I, I just hope you're appreciating <laughs> compared to what the notes are to that position shift how much harder the position shift is compared to just pressing the notes down. And that's where all these piano challenges typically reside. It's how e efficiently do you shift your position to where you need to be. So uh, holding that B, let me show it with that. Okay, holding the B. Now I'm going to hold the E. And again, uh, keeping the uh, right hand inside the keyboard, but the left hand on the, on the outside. Yeah, see that? Cyan is not easy. I'm leaning over my right hip, or not leaning, I'm rolling over my right hip. So I'm already compromised in terms of my lower back. Uh, in fact, if I'm practicing for a long time, I'm just going to scoot over and sit 
on the right side of my chair um, to make it a little less hard on my lower back. Okay, and then anyway, shift myself back. Anyway, eventually you'll work through backwards all the way to green, and now you can do green to cyan, right? Then yellow to green, then uh, orange to, to yellow. All of these things, they will be hard at first if you're not used to these kinds of shapes. But the thing is, once you do that work, it kind of solidifies and it allows you to just move on to other things, and now this is part of your technical skill set. All right, so that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Um, just decide how you want to play that final E, whether pedaled or a little more abrupt. But other than that, uh, that's the piece. Quite a few challenges, but once you know what you're doing, they're all completely manageable. So uh, again, write me some uh, nice and not so nice comments so I get some feedback as far as the usefulness or lack thereof of such a video and uh, see you in some other piece uh, in a different era perhaps uh, but uh, all the same kind of piano challenges as before no doubt okay uh, see you soon I hope